All righty then. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Jock, how's it going, man? It's going good, brother. It is going. So I haven't done a live in uh, quite some time. So I thought, let me do one. And here I am. We'll have a chat in a bit. I have got... Uh, only this guy left there's a bit of uh, machine work finishing that needs to happen down there but that's it yeah that is it that was as quick as he yeah that didn't have a lot of handle work on this it's literally just cutting those grooves yeah which were laser cut in same as uh then jumping on the top there. So it's just two little grooves there, two grooves there, and there are four of them at the bottom. And obviously when I glued up the the G10, that obviously gets filled and and uh, obviously cut off um, or cut off. Uh, the G10 isn't hollow, yeah? So um, once you've done the entire handle, then I just come back in, finish those off, and now it's just on a sandpaper mandrel on the flexi shaft, polish those up done um i actually like the the little texture that it leaves in there so on this one i might actually just leave it as is maybe i should just clean those up and then i can leave everything as is yeah so why not why the heck not i quite like that rough scratchiness in there and it does give a a nice little texture in there yeah so everything isn't as smooth as people i don't know i don't like smooth man don't like one tone that's why you've got a uh, satin finish on the blade itself and then the steel as it was when it came from the mill done just as is done yeah but keeping those little Lines nice and crisp. That's where the trick lies. But this is my D13 model. Yeah, I haven't made one of these in, in quite some time. So I had a client that's been nagging me for uh, one of these guys for, for quite some time. And, uh, well, I finally gave in. Why? Because I discovered that I had uh, pre-cuts like these. Um, well, pre-cuts, the, the shapes. Uh, Pre-cut, I, I think I came across five or six of them. So when he said he he wants one of those, well, he didn't want one of these. He actually wanted one of my D13s, which was, well, was, which is this guy here. So he wanted one of those. And, um, and I said, well, I, I know that I've got three templates of those, all templates, um, uh, pre-cuts. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he asked, well, do I have a D13 and a, a mini cleaver? And I, had a, went and I had a look and I said, well, yeah, I have. I've got three. I think I've got four, actually, three, three, three of them. Uh, but anyway, he said, well, we don't mind just making him one of each. And I said, well, we do have a bit of a lull in production. And uh, I sold my D13. So, um, then, well, let's get his out of the way. It's practice pieces. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, so use his as a practice piece. <laughs> no, um, I, I've 
in the process of making myself one of these as well. Yeah, one of each. Because I, I don't have a mini cleaver and I don't have a D13. Like I mentioned, I, I sold mine, my original one. Um, so there we go. So I did his. Tomorrow they go for, uh, oh, not tomorrow, on Thursday, they, Thursday morning, they go for logos. And that's it. This one on the bottom of the handle, I see there's a bit of a nick. So I will need to uh, just run that on a 320 again. And what the hell? I think I made this one a bit tight. Nice. Okay. So, but pretty much that was it, yeah? That was pretty much it. I see there's a whole load of guys in here, man. Uh, let's just get back to... What was the one? That, that was the main view, yeah? And then uh, on Saturday... Had a single guy for class, a one-on-one, -on -one, and he wanted to do inter integrals. So uh, we forged that guy. Well, he forged his, um, and obviously he got to finish his. I did not, because um, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do on this transition area. Yeah, I don't want to just leave it there, because that would be too easy. Just leaving it, it would be way too easy. So I need to go and plan something in there, maybe a bit of carving, maybe a bit of sculpting. I don't know. I don't know. Greg, how's it going, man? Christian, how's it going, gentlemen? Greg Hogan, Willy van der Marve. Michal, how's it going, buddy? Uh, Robert, how's it, but? Uh, Robert, I'll see you at the end of the month, right? Honley, how's it going? Mesmerizing. It just means that you don't have... Sorry, I'm, I'm looking on screen, which is here, and the camera is here. So if, look, if I'm looking a bit skill, you know why, yeah? Ha, 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 Mr. Kearney, how's it going, buddy? Still the dude with the coolest fucking logo on the planet, yeah? Uh, yeah, man, Jason, I did. it's part of the look of the range of knives I, I used to do, the production blades. Um, people like, well, they buy cool-looking knives, right? And uh, these came out on, you'll notice that the, the handles on these two are exactly the same. Let's quickly just talk about this. Yeah, when you're doing production... And you find a design that sells. Yeah, that's it. Well, this is the D13 model Dragon 13 D13. So this was the 13th knife in my official design range. Um, and then I started giving them names like the Mini Cleaver and an ad. <coughs> so the Mini Cleaver is actually number 16 D16. All right. But anyway, so you find a handle that works. Everyone likes. Everyone likes the size the proportions the blah 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 internationally i'm getting good feedback from it so um then i designed a cleaver based on this and the handle was exactly the same same design yeah so i made the cleaver which sat about there nice size and then uh, one of my u.s resellers asked me can't, can't you make it smaller i want to put that cleaver in my pocket i want, I want, I want a mini cleaver so it's called it done all right, but then it looked too bland, so I put the little notches in. So in one of my other designs, I think it's the D9, D10. I'm not too sure. I haven't. Well, we, we make them up to a thousand, and then then I discontinue the design completely. Um, oh, I can't remember. It is the. It's not the Viper. Ah, oh, crap! Scout. The Scout. Scout V2. I started, uh, there was a, a guy that went hunting quite often. Um, and he, in the in the middle of winter, uh, he was using one of my my scouts, the original scout version one. He was using it and he loved the shape and the whole thing. And um, as he was using it, um, he reckons, well, he's got gloves on and then his gloves got full of, of uh, uh, blood. So the knife kept on twisting in his hand as he's using it. So I'm thinking, what do you want me to do? He said, well, can't you put, like, grooves in there? that will just grip a bit better. I did tell him to upgrade his fucking gloves, yeah? <laughs> Not use latex gloves. <laughs> Not use these cheap-ass um, builder's warehouse or just hardware shop gloves, um, which he later on upgraded, but um, we'll... Never done that, so I put in these, and uh, he started calling them glove grooves as we were talking, not blood grooves, glove grooves, glove grips, um, and then I incorporated in that design, and it worked brilliant, um, and like I said, we sold a thousand units of those, so done, so I decided to just just add those in, yeah, just a little 
it looks like you don't need you need the grip on this fucking thing. I didn't no man, it's a it's a little EDC, yeah. Uh, you're not gonna be chopping down a tree with us, especially not with that thin edge. Yeah, nice and thin. 0 0.3 mil edges before sharpening. Um, so yeah, this is not a tree chopping or a fucking cleaver. It is a everyday carry knife. It just looks like a little cleaver. I do put a thing on there, and I can tell you that this is the best spatula I own. Yeah, doing your eggs, fucking everything. Uh, this is both N690, so your pan doing this in the pan doesn't blunt your knife. Yeah. Uh, I just feel sorry for the bloody pan. But anyway, yeah, so that, that's where the little grippy thingies came from. Um, stock removal, buddy. Benjamin, stock removal. Uh, haven't done these in, in quite some time. Uh, Philly, how's it going, brother? Yeah, man, finally. I haven't been online in uh, on live, online, online live for a quite, a, quite, quite a, quite a while actually. Uh, I think it's close to three weeks, four weeks maybe. Uh, it's just a lot of stuff happening in the shop, man. Uh, thank you, buddy. It's appreciated. Uh, yeah, Jacques is also uh, <laughs> Jacques. Don't worry, man. I've got plenty forges. We've we've spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time building a bit of stock. Um, I actually ran out of uh, supplies on on Monday yesterday, so we had to go and get some new ones. But uh, yeah, cast forges. I have plenty, buddy. <laughs> Christian, just go make yourself a spatula, man. I actually own, I should you not, three, three. To forge weld is important. To count is more important than, no. <laughs> um, I actually own three custom-made spatulas, yeah, from Bladesmiths in South Africa. Uh, so... Uh, David is asking, what's the finish on those? Uh, that, that is just the, the raw steel, yeah, uh, just the steel as the steel came, um, and then a 600 hand finish, sand wrap finish. That's it. That is the spines are done on a 320. I think this, these bevels here are done on 400. That's it. I don't like finishing the entire knife on the same grit all over. It just looks like you didn't plan. Yeah. Um, multiple facets. Uh, I like actually polishing that, that little curve. Um, man, the, the first one, I think there's two or three I did, that was finished up to a thousand grit and then mirror polished. Um, so that looked freaking awesome. That, that really looks awesome. But uh, because it's a production knife and you do have a price point, so uh, then you need to plan. Um, and uh, the first one, the second one, the third one you do is kind of to just make sure that your planning and your costing actually works out. Um, and those went to, to good mates because they knew I was not going to do that for long. <laughs> uh, Sean, how's it going, brother? Ball crackling. I actually, uh, Lee, yeah, man, I, I actually had uh, um, um, with this one without the handle, um, I cut some pork belly um, and it's not even sharpened yet. So that was does that, that was yesterday's lunch. Uh, pork belly, uh, David, yeah, buddy, I'm, I'm I am a, a vegan today. Well, part vegan, yeah. So I had a vegan breakfast. How's that? <laughs> This oak. And I actually uh, did manage to start playing with another one on the forge today. Oh, crap. Don't kick the bucket or the, or the camera. Sorry, guys. Um, if you don't know the story, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want people's panties in a knot again because I apparently call stock removers vegans. Yeah. Uh, those blades, Jeremy, is uh, all N690. Bowler N690. Why? Well, because it was... It's a good steel, yeah. Definitely not the best steel on the market, uh, but for the price point, uh, performance, edge holding ability, availability, that's fucking the best thing in South Africa. Done. That's it. Um, thanks, man. That's appreciated. Karat, how's it going, buddy? Willem, Mr. Boyce, I need to come pop around to you, buddy. Seriously, we need to talk. Uh, thanks, brother. Willem, I have got some uh, some stuff that I need uh, 
you talk you about uh, remember that that casting furnace yeah i finally have a couple of those uh we actually shipped one down to cape town today we're shipping another one down to cape town tomorrow uh casting furnaces are starting to run which is awesome but they are funking heavy man <laughs> those things are heavy um they they i think it's uh 48 kilogram uh it is that's a heavy thing yeah uh which he runs an a6 crucible uh you can do a6 a7 and a and an a8 but i specifically designed it for an a6 crucible uh salamander graphite crucible um and uh one of them is staying right in my shop and we will be doing uh, a bit of uh preparation for a special project where uh well let the cat out of the bag yet but yeah man that is gonna be a fun one and i can't wait for that um no it's not a, a sanctioned blah 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 it's just a little project that i am uh, seriously getting into uh <laughs> sean dude um <laughs> there's a reason i no longer make karambits right um well aside from the fact we made a thousand units and uh then i stopped producing them um so if you guys are interested in one of my karambits africancustomknives.com let's go find black dragon forge under their uh um makers list um and then i saw yesterday there was still one of my karambits available through them um i think uh Blade Gallery, not Blade Gallery, sorry. Blade Gallery won't have Karambits. Um, Blade HQ, I think, has got some Karambits as well. Uh, but no, I don't, I no longer make them. Uh, how's it going, buddy? Great, yeah, man. So, I am doing well, buddy. And yourself? So, I mean, that was, that was pretty much it. Sorry, man. Um, there wasn't much planning. I thought, well, I haven't been live in a while, so let's go while live yeah so we've done these two they uh, need logos tomorrow um touch up on the handle on that one which is about two minutes then um i'm off to centurion on thursday to to uh, put logos on them and i might actually get time to play with this guy yeah we'll do another one this this is a cool shape um it, it really is a cool shape i would have loved that blade about there I think then it would be uh, a nice size. So an extra, I don't know, maybe two and a half, maybe three inches on top of this. Yeah, how long the blade is, I, I don't know. I've, I haven't measured it. Um, so, but it was cool. Um, so, like I said, there was a result of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, class with the student. He finished his. Um, I didn't finish mine uh, because the priority is obviously with my student. I just needed to show him the process of forging one of these. And then when it came to the grinding, there's a couple of tricks that you need to keep in mind. So uh, we did his. Um, this is steel that I I bought in uh, the States at Blade Show in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. It's Hitachi 1075. So it is 1075 with a bit more vanadium in it as i understand uh, which gives you a finer grain or it promotes finer grain um i can tell you one thing this thing is annealed properly okay so um i did drill two holes in the excess excess piece that was the back um, and then chopped it off just to make sure that my annealing i can actually drill through it uh before i start grinding and getting things right and um done um, and I can't drill the bloody thing, yeah? Um, so, but anyway, so I know the annealing is right. But as I'm grinding this thing, holy crap, it is hard, man. It is hard. It is. Mm. And uh, obviously, uh, um, the, the blade we quenched, we did an edge quench, yeah? Because um, I teach edge quenching. But anyway, so we, we quenched that, and this thing just popped the homon. So um, I had two meters of the stuff. Um, I, stupid as me, sold one. So I've got a half a meter left of this. So I will definitely be getting some more. Yeah. And uh, when I was there last year at Blade Show, 
uh, the same guy comes to me. He says, hey, you want more of that? I'm going, dude, man. Ah, no, let, let me, let, no, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not going to take more of that still. Brother, I can tell you one thing. Next year, I'm fucking buying everything I have. It's as easy as that. I'm done. And I will ship it, even if it means containers full of this stuff uh, back home to South Africa. I will just have to do this. This is, this is brilliant. Yeah. I really, really like this. But I also spoke to a good mate of mine, Mr. Stan and Husky, down in Cape Town. Yeah. So if you're in South Africa and you're looking for a good steel, um, spoke to Stan earlier today. Uh, well, on Friday, uh, yesterday, and today. Um, spoke to him. So I've got a steel, a fairly large steel order coming up from him for me personally. And I phoned him and said, hey, buddy, um, Sabian Silver Steel. Not the the crap that Bola sells as say, uh, as silver steel, but the, the the real stuff. Yeah, silver steel. Um, have you got? And he goes, yes. And so, well, is my order out yet? And he goes, yes. And so, well, no mind putting in another one. So send me send me two twenty five mil bars. They not cheap, by the way. It's not cheap, but uh, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, and don't go and think when, when, when someone tells you, yeah, but the bowler stuff is like, it's like, no, it's not like, it's the difference between Coke and Pepsi. Pepsi tastes like Coke and Coke tastes like Pepsi. No, it's not the same fucking thing. So what Bowler, bowler Alderham in Joburg or in Cape Town or wherever in South Africa sells as silver steel, it is not silver steel. Yeah. And then uh, what they also sell as O1 is not O1. Because proper O1. Stuff from the UK, uh, you can actually get a Hummel on and Bowler K460, which everyone sells as a one in South Africa. You cannot do a Hummel on, yeah. But anyway, so that was me, um, gentlemen. Thank you. I am uh, Louis. How's it going, man? Benjamin, oh, dude, Tygo, um, yeah. That is a name I haven't heard in a while. Um, when I started knife making like 408 years ago, no, it was about 11 odd years ago. Yeah. Um, Tygo had a, a DVD out, and I paid big money to buy this thing and, and import it from the States. Um, and I got here, and I, I sat and I watched this thing. And here's this dude in a fucking grass hut, um, hitting pretty much a a knife with a piece of steel that, that didn't even resemble a hammer. Um, but anyway, I mean, him and uh, it's him and another guy, and uh, I, I think some of the lady got involved in the pewter casting or silver casting and did fittings on this thing, and they did this Neolithic knife. And initially, I was completely disappointed in my purchase. Uh, but the second time I watched it, then you realize the amount of skill that this guy has yeah, to finish a knife and just far sharpen it. So plungers are finished and everything is just perfect. Uh, uh, I think a half meter knife would be nice size. And that's yeah, no, Robert, no, ready, no. You you can you can make one. I end I end making the knife, forging the blade is not an issue. Yeah, um, grinding that sucker and then uh, making sure it stays straight in the heat. I'd much rather spend uh, that time battling with a dagger that I can sell for three and a half thousand dollars and not for fucking two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So no, I'd much rather spend my time making uh, real knives. Yeah. Why not? Because I can. Oh man, I would love, brother. I would love so, 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 so much love to meet that guy. Seriously, like I said, um, he inspired me to to do the the, the whole. Well, him and five million other guys, but I, I actually still own the DVD. I, I just need to go and find it. Um, but my, my, my mouth just hang open. I, I, I just couldn't believe there was this guy, the man, that could do all of this, and and you realize that. If you could do it with the most basic of equipment, yeah, then why the hell are we chasing our own asses for like I don't know the the best lathe, the best sandblasting machine, the best grinder, the best bladder, bladder, bladder? When all you only when when you really really need is this and this, yeah, a couple of basic tools. Done. Um, 
maybe I should just make a Neolithic knife. Thank you for bringing that up, Benjamin. That is, uh, thank you for for that little, uh, I don't know, trip down nostalgia, nostalgia lane. Nost I don't know anyone. Third world education. Remember that. Uh, <laughs> Dirk, how's it going, man? Or oh, David? Sorry, man. Uh, holy crap! Twenty three inch, dude. No, I, I, I honestly don't know what the size of this thing. Is. But yeah, I. I I made a sword once, one and a half hand bastard sword, and uh, promised myself I'll never do that again. Don't be stupid. Don't, the, the sword is not just a long knife. Um, and then Ubisoft asked me for the, uh, I think it was, uh, a, what was it? Shadows Die Twice. Uh, no, not Shadows Die Twice. Yeah, Shadows Die Twice. A Sekiro Shadows Die Twice to, uh, to do the katana. And I only had, I think it was nine days nine or ten days to do it um so we finished it but not the shire not not the the scabbard um and after that one i said never again again <laughs> so i don't know but i don't know man I've, I've just done a piece of damascus that is large enough for a uh for a, a sword so i don't know i don't know um it might be the size and shape of a sword uh, but then with an angle grinder, I could also uh, chop that thing into three pieces, get two daggers and a small little, I don't know, pocket hidey little knife as well. So I'm not sold on a sword idea yet. But yes, 23 inches. Uh, David, buddy, uh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> but I am, man. <laughs> 23 inches. Vimpia, how's it going, man? Yeah, buddy. I've been keeping uh, keeping a low profile or trying to. But it's good fun chatting with you guys, man. Trenton, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, man, we need to do another hangout. It's just I'm, I'm kind of working my ass off. Um, they're saying, look, I'm not going to do production stuff anymore. And we start cleaning out the shop. And I came across these templates. And then, uh, like I said, it's it, a good client just phones me up and says, hey, would you make me one of these when you do these things again? And I said, well, you know what? It's as 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 it happens, I actually have these, and I'm, I'm kind of in between large projects on, on daggers. Um, and the next one I'm, I'm planning a dagger is going to take me a while. It really, really is. Uh, that's not going to be a dagger. It's going to be a mangosh. Uh, so another left-handed dagger with a basket hilt and the whole thing. I want to I go mad again. Um but before I start that one, um, I needed something else, and where this came in. So I said, okay, cool, let's do the one-on-one -on -one workshop, because uh, I haven't played with integrals in a while, and I, I do want to make two or three of those um, before I start this project. Yeah, so why not? And uh, yeah, buddy, so long story short, Trenton, we need to do a hangout, man. But I need to, um, I don't know, nick off another hour, hour and a half before we actually do that, yeah? So I can just sit and... Uh, Come on, Tim Brown, make another sword. No, buddy. No, no. Well, if I do, it is uh, not going to be a eight hundred dollar sword. Yeah. Uh, so the next one, I, I think I, if I ever, well, I am doing a, a main gash. Yeah. And that one, I uh, think I'll be going for like a, I don't know. Um, I've got a price point in my head for for what what I'm thinking on this design. Um, that one ain't gonna be fucking cheap. I can promise you that. Yeah. Change uh, it, dude. You finished your feet, kitchen knife. Um, yes, I made a couple, um, and then I don't know. I met David Buller down in Durban. Um, I bought one of his knives. And then my kitchen knives, I just said, well, that, that was it. Same as Jack, yeah? Um, used to make razor, razor type objects, straight razor looking things. Um, met, well, I, I've known Jack forever today. Um, actually held one of his, played with it, and then stopped making it. It's easy as that. Done. That's it. Um, not, that it did, not that mine didn't sell, but I mean, no. There are guys that I know that makes better ones, and I will at one point own. Victor, how's it going, buddy? 
I will own one of uh, Jack's razors. I actually own two, maybe three of Jack's knives. Um, and then David, I own uh, one of David's uh, uh, chef's knives. I, I believe it's the very first knife he ever won an award for. Well, I believe, I know it's the first knife that he's ever won an award for. Um, I'm glad to say that I own that thing, yeah? And that thing works every single fucking day. Uh, oh, brother, thanks, man. Uh, I don't even think I've got it here. What have I got here? It's maybe, maybe, maybe. Nope, that's, well, that's that one. This might be it. This might be it. <laughs> No, sorry, that's that one. So the selectors are, are in the house. Yeah. Sorry, man. Thought because I, I really freaking enjoy making stilettos. Those things are awesome. Yeah. So by the way, this one here, you'll see. There's no ready for sale photos on this yet, or any punts. Um, I am planning on putting this thing. On a live, uh, I don't want to say knife uh, a, a live sale or an auction or something, um, but myself and a couple of mates are planning on on getting together, yeah, and uh, well, virtually getting together, and then uh, talking you through the production of uh, pieces. And then having those pieces, then you can see the harmon on this thing, yeah, if I flex it ever so slightly. And people ask me, why did I black the blade? Just look at it, man. <laughs> I think it's fucking awesome. It was begging for a black blade. Um, and in the design itself, um, I had a black blade. Um, so, yeah, why not? I like it. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. I, I, I've already planned another one of these. There's a couple of tweaks that I want to do. But if I'm going to be stupid and carve another footers like that. I might as well do that at Damascus, yeah, and then charge stupid amounts of money for it. But yeah, but anyway, so we, we are planning on go doing a, uh, I don't know, sticking these things on a website somewhere uh, with a pay gate where you can purchase and depending on where you are in the world, shipping will be included or not included and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, showcase the knives and you can ask questions on whatever of them and 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 as opposed to just doing a virtual knife show which is basically just shit listed on a website yeah but Calvin thank you buddy I appreciate it man Vimpy Vimpy uh she got my phone going <laughs> excellent Vimpy have fun buddy have fun man uh Uh, Christian, okay, so a 40 centimeter chopper is that overall or is that blade length? Um, <laughs> and then also, is it a hollow grind or is it a flat grind? If it's a chopper, I'm assuming it is a flat grind. Um, if you're battling with your flat grinds, uh, slow the machine down, sharp grits, done, that's it. Uh, your, your, your wrists, let me just take the comment off. So, your wrists, when you're holding onto a knife, so for instance, that's my platen, yeah. Doesn't look like it. This is now a platen, yeah? It runs that way. So when you're grinding and your knife, your hands are not supported, okay, you're struggling to do that, to do that, and now uh, to manage that. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take, get up as close as possible to the machine, use that protruding tummy, and I can't get as close in, yeah? Stabilize your, your wrists on your tummy. Done, and at least that plane is sorted, yeah? Then when it comes to this plane here, you can see I'm using my entire hand. Don't do that for the flex. What you do is you position your thumb either at the top, as 90% of the time, it'll be at the top of the blade, and you grip. Now you position with the wrist, get the flat, and then as you add pressure with your thumb, you can see as I'm pressing my thumb, I've got a micro... So I can, I can now adjust at like a half a degree or a one degree just by adding pressure to my thumb. And when you're moving, you're not the shy schoolgirl. Can you see what's happening? You're not turning on the spot. Elvis had it. What you need to do is move with, a, with your hips, yeah, to get to parallel. And if you can't do that and you clamp this thing in a vise, all right, 
You get yourself a file and you scrape this thing. So let me just get a file. Where the hell? I don't want to stand up. I don't have a file. Okay, so this is, ah, oh man, needle files there. Okay, so this is actually a wax file, so don't don't look at it. So you're not going to be filing that direction. You're going to literally draw from this thing in this direction. Start with a bastard cut, then go to a first cut, second cut, third cut. Then if you've got the money, speak to Raymond at Faf. Give me a call. I'll give you his details. Um, and buy yourself a fourth cut file. Fourth cut file, once you're done, it's about a 320 grit finish. Yeah. So... That'll get shit flat. If you don't know how a file works, you've got no business being on a grinder. No business at all. That just means you've got more money than cents. Yeah? So, and that was me insulting a guy that gave me a compliment. Christian, I hope you um, don't, don't, don't get offended. Yeah. Uh, but 40 centimeter choppers for your eight night, struggling with the bells. Talk to me, man. You've got my cell phone number. If you don't, then go on to uh, Facebook. And find me cell phone number, or I'll just post it right now. Uh, 083 451 Come on. There we go. See the comment on 644. Uh, but anyway, so give me a call, buddy, and uh, I can sort you out. Yeah. Uh, beer bone straight for <laughs> Yeah, there is no such thing. It's either felchin or it's not. There's no bare bones, stripped down, modernized, bastardized. Either you make a felchin or you don't. That's it. And don't go and look at whatever dude made it on Instagram or on YouTube. Yeah, go and fucking do research. Uh, look at 15th, 16th century felchins. Uh... So where are we now, man? Uh... <laughs> Sean, come on up. Pop over, man, and we do this. Uh... Evening, everyone. Wiley, how's it going, man? Calvin. Uh... On the first one. Oh, the the um, a little Eastern inspired dagger. Uh, yeah, man, that thing kicked my ass all over the place. Yeah, um, it it really did. <laughs> Stilettos is where it's at, buddy. And people ask me, so isn't that thing gonna break? And and then I just laugh. Um, just like aside from me, who else is making stilettos? Yeah, um, you know, ninety percent of the people that are commenting on stilettos have got no idea um, that the stiletto is actually an assassin's weapon. Yeah, so go read up on that. It's, it's an incredible story. Uh, you can find it on uh, Wikipedia. Yeah, just just search stiletto Wikipedia on Wikipedia, and the, the whole story is there. It's an incredible, incredible read. Um, I I don't think there is any knife with such a bad reputation out there, man. It is freaking awesome, yeah. Um, it is crazy the, the comments I get on these things. Um, it's, I mean, one and a half inches from the tip, there's normally a weakened section, so that if someone pissed you off so much that you can stab him with it and then fucking break the tip off, and then people ask me, "Isn't that tip going to break?" <laughs> yeah, buddy, it's supposed to. Yeah, it's supposed to. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it is awesome. Man, but Victor, yeah, you got it, buddy. I, I love stilettos, man. Sorry, let me just get that up again. Yeah, uh, Calvin, buddy, you've got it, you've got it, you've got it, you've got it. My first odd, uh, I think it's 10 knives were done with files. Uh, all my high end, really, really high end stuff is done with files. Um, I don't think this one on my desk. At the moment, I mean, that's just any, anyone can make this knife. Yeah, anyone can just make this knife. It is not something special. There's a couple of techniques to draw the heel out nice, um, get the shape flowing, blah, 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 blah. Do a design first. Don't just have shit 
evolve on the anvil and once you get used to making that style of knife then you can play on the anvil making them bigger making them smaller but the design of the knife is now set in here yeah and you don't set the design on the anvil um, do it on paper but anyway so we draw do this knife yeah and we get went and made it but now i want to make it all fancy and shit because i do have fossilized walrus ivory that i can use on the handle yeah but now the handle i'm thinking has to be so normally you would undersize a scale and then have the spine stick out um but i'm thinking why don't you oversize the scale there's a couple of guys that that do that um so i started drawing and i'm, I'm quite liking where that whole idea is going but then also, I mean, why don't you just put titanium as liner, but then bend the titanium in that fashion. And then on that raised thing, I mean, you can now play with different layers and levels and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, yeah, I need to do a design first, man. Uh, Victor, send me a WhatsApp and remind me, please, sir. And I'll send you his stuff. Uh, James. Hmm. I might just have to. Thanks, buddy. I, I might just have to uh, uh, get a hold of him. Tim, let me let me know when you're going, buddy. That is on my bucket list. Yeah. Um, and you know what the, the real sucky part is. Um, so everyone knows Alec, right? Um, and Alec got uh, access to um, a private viewing in the Wallace collection, and uh, he sent me photos of a main gash. Um, while I was doing one two years ago, he sent me photos. He said, oh, you need to do this. And I'm going, slight problem. Um, I'm like almost halfway around the world away from that. But yeah, it's on my to-do list, buddy. It, it, it really is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well I, ca I can't say that yeah I, i've got eight grinders at the moment in my shop uh well nine if you if you count my big boy uh so nine knife grinders in my shop um and still just one guy yeah some guy like mr conrad hicks over here uh good maiden come cape town how's it going conrad uh, i mean that guy here is one of the best blacksmiths i've ever met yeah um and uh he's got like 200 power hammers well maybe not 200 but <laughs> i think he's got four five power hammers in his shop yeah and he restores them and uh, man i know no, it, it's good so i have got a couple of grinders conrad's got a couple of power hammers um i don't know we all have our issues <laughs> apparently <laughs> yeah man I, I need to trim this thing uh, I, I scorched half of it, so I kind of just snipped it straight. You can see there's a stray long beard, um, so I'll probably do a trim. But I need a, a haircut as well, um, and this happened this morning, so I, I do need to cut it. So I'm thinking maybe tomorrow morning I'll do a uh, just taking the tip off again. Yeah, buddy, yeah, but it is good fun making those, man. Uh, you do, dude. But first off, you need to decide what you want to do. Yeah. Um, Hidden full tangs are fun. They are. They are. Um, uh, but I, I love daggers. Yeah. Uh, another guy had asked me to uh, uh, negative reveal on the tang. Oh, is that what it's called? Oh, I like that. It's going to make me sound all snazzy. Look, I know what the hell I'm on about. <laughs> Have a size and do some file work on the titanium liner. Everyone does file work on the titanium liner, buddy. Uh, just think about this. If you carve the titanium, so it looks like you've got a titanium round bar stuck on the outside of this little thingy. Yeah, because everyone files and do fancy filing. This is not a, a flipping broken folder of like a broken knife. I only make fixed blades. <laughs> So for my folding knife maker friends out there, don't get your knickers in a twist, yeah? <sighs> Trenton, nobody. Um, it, it's good fun. And he had me, uh, he, he, well, I was allowed to play on one, which was brilliant. 
Uh, no, Conrad is a cool guy. He really is. And uh, I am planning, uh, with my wife's permission, um, she will probably be going with, uh, we are planning another trip down in Cape Town as soon as this fucking madness is gone. And Conrad, when we do that, buddy, I'm going to let you know because I'd like to spend a couple of days in your shop as uh, discussed the last time I was down there. Yeah. Um, I do want to pick your brain on a couple of um, just moving moving metal. Yeah, just, just on moving metal. That, that's all. Uh, nothing specific. Um, this mean, blacksmith, you, power hammers, moving metal on a power hammer is not the same as moving metal with a hammer. Yeah. And uh, I've got a couple of weird ass ideas that I want to that I want to try. But aside from that, you're gonna go and play around for like three years and try to figure it out. And you can speak to one of the best guys in the business saying, "Hey, buddy, how is this done?" Yeah. So even though just, I know how to draw that hill, yeah, but I also know it takes forever in a day. I also know there are a way quicker ways of doing that. So, and then I realized what my problem was on this one, because um, I would like to forge a little round neck in there, yeah, but like a, a three mil radius in there. So I'm not too sure when I should be doing. So the order of operation and, 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 and. but every single time you do something, uh, you want to make it more complex. Um, and uh, your order of operation is extremely important. Um, and yeah, man, just keep notes, keep notes, keep notes, keep notes. I've got a, a dodgy old diary where all these little notes go in every time I forge. Uh, <coughs> does 1095 or 50 to 100 make a better chef's knife? It's not the material. I can tell you that much. Yeah. Um, which is the better material for a chef's knife? I don't know. I would much rather use a 1084, uh, which is closer to the ultimate steel um, than a 1095 or a 52100. Um, but that's just me, and I'm full of crap. I don't know. Yeah, but the best answer for that is depends on who makes the knife, because you get a chef knife looking knife, and then you get a chef's knife. Yeah, a real one. And uh, if your mom or your girlfriend tells you, oh, it's a beautiful knife, trust me, it's fucking not. It is not. Um, then I said, go to uh supermarket, buy the cheapest chef's knife you can get your hands on. Yeah. And look at the edge geometry on that China-made, machine-made thing. And then compare yours. And this is where it really takes balls in knife making. Compare your handmade thing to the production thing, mass produced, yeah. And if your edge doesn't compare thickness, hardness, hardness, it, it should be better, okay. But thickness, cutting ability, not how sharp it is out of the packet, because anyone can fucking sharpen anything. I mean, I've done this, taken a piece of mild steel and sharpened it and done a corner paper cut with a paper sitting and you just let the weight of the knife cut. You can do this with fucking mild steel, man. This is nothing. As soon as you understand that the 15 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree little fucking sharpening thing, that's just one type of edge you can get. Yeah, and it's not the best one, by the way. Um, and as soon as you understand this, then, well, life becomes easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, broken knife. Calvin is too, man. I mean, folding knives, also referred to as a broken knife. Yeah. That's why they call them fixed blades, because we fixed the fucking problem. It's no longer broken. Yeah. <laughs> so you think about the uh, Roman gladius, the gladius, yeah? So the Roman foot soldier had a slip, uh, 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 what's it fucking called? A friction puller, normally made from broken gladiuses that he wore under his tunic, his, his leather armor. Um, broken eyes. Obviously, I'm just now bastardizing history there. Um, but yeah, man, started calling them broken knives. Um, I don't know. Obviously, had way too many beers in me when I did that at Blade Show. And the best of all is you got <laughs> the likes of Matthew Parkinson sending, finding guys that, that are brown bagging, um, selling knives at Blade Show that they're not supposed to, but in the pit, blah, 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 blah and sending them to me. And, and, and then tell them, go and ask that guy for advice. 
that was that was not good. We had a couple of guys walking away crying, man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Trenton, you do that, buddy. Uh, yeah, man, I'll crap on anyone. Yeah, anyone for free. No, no, no special treatment required. Yeah, and I like you, so I'll, I'll, I'll even, I won't hold back. <laughs> Trent is a cool guy. Go check him out, man. Um, he's been making knives. He's been kicking ass this entire lockdown thing. Uh, it's just no excuse. Just balls to the wall making knives. Brilliant, buddy. Uh, just in the last hundred days, you have come leaps and bounds. I want to say you've made more progress over the last 100 days than you have ever So when you started making knives up to when lockdown started. That's saying a lot. Been focusing. I like it, buddy. I like it. Johan, how's it going? Uh, it is not all in the material. The shape and angle and weight plays a large part. Johan, yes, man. Everything plays a part. But, but uh, uh, a lot of you guys are so fixated on on the materials that they can't see past it. And then you've got Facebook guys with Facebook degrees in knife making. And, and, and there's guys that made knives for like three or four years that are so read up, so revved up, and so hyped up. Um, they've got a bit of a following. And, and people believe whatever shit they just spew. Blah, 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 blah. By default, if a chef's knife is made out of stainless versus the crappiest carbon, personal choice, I'll go for carbon. Why is that? Easier to fucking sharpen. Yeah, I can change the the sharpening, whatever I sharpen with. I mean, it's a known fact. If you sharpen just on a 220 grit stone, just hone that edge. It'll cut meat like a fucking monster. If I want to cut, I don't know, silk, I would then have to do it on a fucking 7,000 Japanese grit, whatever stone. Um, so sharpen for the purpose. Done. That's it. So once again, your steel selection will also be based on the purpose of the knife. Uh, you don't get a chef's knife. A chef's knife that people generally refer to as a smash chef's knife is a European style chef's knife. Uh, but I want to. I don't want to get into it, man. I don't want to get into it. You're just gonna get me all worked up, and I'm gonna end up cussing and screaming, and that we don't want. There's no crying in knife making. <laughs> There's also no trying in knife making. Yeah, so don't try, just do. Uh, Mark, how's it going, my buddy, my baby face? <laughs> Dude, they just lost you, uh, friendship point. I oh, no, no, I know. It is the eyes that are failing, brother. <laughs> yeah, now age stuff starts going, man. I oh, know. <laughs> Mark, how is Atlanta doing, buddy? Hot Atlanta. Is it hot yet? Luke, how's it going, buddy? Qatar. Yeah, I need to maybe, Alan, um, I need to maybe do something on edge geometry because everyone kind of um, is, is kind of just stuck on the, the whole Lansky, blah, 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 and they don't realize that the old man Lansky had a thing. He could actually see what's going on. People lost the ability to sharpen a fucking knife because no one was teaching them how to do this anymore. Um, it's like, I don't know, your dad not teaching you how to do that brisket that he's famous for um, or not the basic skill. I mean, people are so fucking shit scared of knives at the moment. If you think back, uh, your grandfather uh, was given a knife at age like seven, six, seven. Yeah. He went to school with that thing. He fucking slept with it. He had a bath with it. He, he, I mean, <sighs> we as kids had knife fights. Yeah. Because our fucking knives were either razor sharp or as blunt as shit. But if you cut yourself, your mom would go, why the fuck did you do that? Don't do that again, stupid ass. And it's, it's kind of part of the whole natural selection thing. If you're that fucking stupid, you shouldn't be alive. But anyway, so people get... Now I'm getting worked up again. Uh, but when I become president, not if, when I become president, the first order of business will be to remove all warning labels or for everything just for a year. Yeah, so that stupid shit can sort itself out and then we can go forward as a nation. Yeah, if you don't, oh crap, if you get offended by what I'm saying. Yeah, look at unsubscribe, leave, just go, 
if you now get offended and you wake up with leprosy tomorrow, you've got a reason to fucking be offended. Yeah. And then contact me because I'll be laughing my ass off. Because, dude, we'll do a video on that and we'll make fucking millions. Something happened because you got offended. Yeah. It hurts your feelings. Fucking nothing more. Damn it. Mm, hot indeed. Sorry, man. You got a bit carried away there again. I'm missing that heat, man. I'm missing that heat. Uh, exactly, man. We also got uh, roped into this whole um, use it until it's blunt, tussle it away because it's cheap, yeah? Uh, but there's also that it's for that reason that I'm making a shit out sort of money just selling custom once off pieces. Uh, <laughs> no sporks, dude. Spork will be for the guy that passes at least five tests. Yeah. Yeah. I think Spork was brilliant when I was hiking until you use it the first time. I think fucking suck. Just get yourself a knife and fork. A forking knife. Yeah. Done. Spork sucks. Uh, <laughs> uh, for me, the choice of steel has a lot to do with my heat ability. Uh, Wiley, what you need to do is, is consider the steel of choice is based on the function, the function of the knife. That's it. Thinking of a general EDC box opening, blah, 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 up to, I don't know, slicing your neighbor's tires. Yeah. If that's your thing. Um, compared to a speciality knife, uh, for instance, a skinning knife. Yeah. Definitely not use the same steel. Which one is going to be tempered? lower is going to be the skinning knife um i would definitely advise my client not to drop the fucking skinning knife yeah because that thing will chip um it's not going to chip when you hit bone because let's face it steel is harder than bone but if you hit it into the bone and then twist the blade it might chip but if you're paying my prices for a blade use your fucking brain it's as easy as that and if you don't have one follow my instructions it's as easy as that yeah but yeah um the the knife is that saying that says uh, um, form follows function? Same thing. It, well, it is exactly that. Yeah, you, your steel choice will be based on what the function of the knife is, because there is a steel that is superior on each function. Yeah, because obviously a skinning knife will be ground fucking razor thin um and you need something that is extremely hard because your client doesn't you don't want that guy to fucking skin like on his five buck buck number five and you have to resharpen um any knife will skin there's more to do with the the skill of the guy using the knife than anything else uh, but yeah i'm getting distracted again but yeah, 52100 is a good steal. Um, really, 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 really good steal. Um, I made myself a little, I don't know, play knife out of 52100 the other day. Um, and uh, man, that thing is just, I oh, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Will you ever get to see it? Fuck no. As soon as I show that thing, there's people that's going to want it. And no, I don't want that. Uh, <laughs> Dude, there's guys. I mean, Mark, you, you, you. <laughs> this is why we get along, buddy. I mean, you know this, yeah. You, you've met people, and like five minutes in the conversation, you're thinking to yourself, "How the fuck are you still alive? Who let this happen?" <laughs> it's when you look around. You're looking at the village idiot, and and this guy is even shaking his head. Yeah, it's those type of people. That's just, just and they. According to me, are the guys that are self-appointed uh, Facebook security police and, and the the guys that will get onto my case and saying, look, you're not wearing a respirator when you're grinding. Where's your PPE? And I say, PPE, fuck off. It's easy as that. Yeah, and if that offends you, once again, move on. Move along. Uh, <laughs> uh Excellent, man. Alan, I, I do have a, uh, a spider co that I, when I carry a knife, I suck at carrying knives. I, I almost never carry a knife. Um, 
it's always that case when you when you go somewhere with a load of knife maker mates. No one's got a fucking knife. <laughs> I don't know. In my shop, there's knives all over the place. Yeah, uh, different stages of sharpen, sharp, and 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 so we've now gone, and I think I've done six knives um, that are really sucky, but they cut like freaking madness. Um, all made out of fifty to one hundred, um, and I don't think a single one of them has been tempered. Um, but they've got rope, and they bolted to walls. Yeah, so if you need to cut it, this, this thing just it doesn't give a shit. It just cuts. Um, but aside from that, I don't carry enough, but I own a crap house full. Um, and I do have a, a very, 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 very expensive spider code. I think there is 27, 28 of them made ever, which I paid through my neck. It is, it's really sad that I have to say this, but I think that is probably the most expensive single knife that I own. And that includes some really expensive custom ones. What do I think of Boca K460? Oh, Bola K460. Uh, Bola K460 is not a one. Let's get that clear. It's not a one. And being like is not fucking like. But K460 makes a good blade. It really does. Follow the spec. Get the heat re specification from Bola. Follow that spec to the fucking T, and you will get a knife that you will cut your neighbor's bride grill to fucking smithereens. Yeah. And you'll probably, you don't use it like an ass. You'll probably only sharpen that knife once every two years. It's a good knife. But fuck, you just look at it and it rusts, man. But it's a hard steel. If you're planning on forging it, yeah. Good luck. Your hammer is going to end it with a couple of dents. But it's good stuff. It really is. Um, I'm not only joking. Uh, K460 is a good steel. It really is. Uh, it forges nice and moves nicely on the hammer. He treats like an absolute brilliant. Uh, you, you don't even need to pretend to know what you're doing. That shit will get hard. Done. Um, it will. It will. You can heat treat it just positive. You don't need to do negative. You don't need to do the, the kiln and the blah, blah, blah. But that thing will hit 60 rock well fucking every time. Man. You really need to have a special talent at fucking up to fuck up K460. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I don't know what my Twitter password is. Um, reset up machine, reset up cell phone, the whole thing, mobiles, everything. Um, and I can't remember what my Twitter password is. Um, I can't even remember what my fucking email address is that I used on Twitter. Um, and I set up Twitter like, man, I don't know how many hundred years ago. So it's not the Black Dragon. It's not Evo Media. It is, I, I don't know. It's probably some other fucking Hotmail account. I don't know. <laughs> You would see, Victor, when when when, when an, a kid is born, yeah, it's cute, it's cuddly, it's bladder, 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 and it, if you, uh, I don't know, uh, and some people. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Um, yes, it is. But on that note, my bucky is also broken. How's it going, buddy? All the way from Germany. All right. Uh, look, guys, this was supposed to be a fucking five-minute thing. Yeah, We're now an hour and three minutes. Um, I am going to have to say, well, let's answer this one. Tristan has asked me, have I ever made a Chris dagger? I know a Chris. Okay. And then I know Mace Vitali. And Mace has done a Chris. So... And I watched that episode of Forged in Fire maybe 50 times. So I feel like I've made one. But no, I haven't made one. Um, I'm ashamed to say it was on my to-do list and then I scratched it out. Oh, I don't know, man. No, I don't want to do it, Chris. Because uh, that is more headaches than I think I need at this point. The blade itself... Is interesting. The handle, the guard, the sheath. Have you really gone and looked at Chris's? Those things are fucking insane. Insane, insane, insane. Um, like I said, I would have loved to do one. Um, but uh, go and have a look at Chillinum Dagger. It's not as bad as a Chris. But it's got that sexy 
and it's got fullers in there. Yeah. So I replaced my Chris with a Chillin. Um, I, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. I'm not sure. Um, but you will see that in the in the near foreseeable future. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for staying. Well, Johan, have a good one for, for tuning in, for spending a bit of time with me. Um, 38 guys, 35 guys, 44 guys. Okay, well, this thing doesn't know which way. But anyway, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the, the, the well that you sat, spent time with me, yeah, talking crap and listening to an old guy just rambling on. Appreciate it. Have fun. Get into your shop. Make shit. It's easy as that, yeah? Uh, is there anything I can do to ease your making? Uh, got a question, in other words? Uh, leave in the comments. Yeah, and I will do my damnedest. Uh, to answer them. I know there were two or three comments, um, especially on, on a video request on me doing a specific thing. Um, I'll go through the comments um, and then uh, I'll put them on the list. Yeah? Gentlemen, ladies, if there are any, have fun, enjoy. Remember, share whatever knowledge you have. Don't be that guy. Yeah?